well it has been raining oh my lens is gonna fog up it has been raining for like the past three days straight now they haven't come and taken the uh, tent down yet they should be here in a little bit and on top of that there's a bunch of tornado warnings so it's a good thing they're coming to take down the tent i was just listening to the uh radio and some warnings came up talking about tornado warnings uh bowser i don't know if you know this but there's a tornado warning you should stay in your house they did say don't stay in mobile homes like i mean you kind of have a mobile home your house is kind of a mobile home he sleeps in henry's old house and henry sleeps right in here in his house i had to put up this because bowser was trying really hard to get in during the wedding but eventually come winter i will build henry a larger enclosure that's my goal i want to go all the way down to the fence line with it because then he gets a lot more grass and i don't really need this section of my yard he can have that bowser mobile homes be careful dude they said mobile homes in particular i know i've watched enough movies and tv to know that if you have a trailer park a tornado is going to try to hit it that's just how this works so they should be here to pick this up pretty soon unfortunate because it's raining but other than that I got some car stuff to do I worked last night on some stuff just kind of cleaned up the car a little bit did a couple little things cleaned up the shop and I didn't film anything because I was watching movies I was watching uh Tropic Thunder hey there guy <clears throat> so if you guys don't remember I took the stock diff apart I mean it wasn't really the factory diff it was a 88 I had bought from a buddy of mine and then i took it apart and i'm putting this limited slip in here so instead of the whole complicated piece of the open diff you know all that crazy sorcery in the open diff this just connects the two axles directly together if one of my axles is spinning and the other isn't you know we got a big issue these are the axles i'm going with these beefy uh strange axles really nice parts so going with these upgraded guys and then we're just going with this just watched some videos and i'm gonna try to see if i can do this never done this before putting a gear in a car has always been something that uh like scares me you know there's always like not scares me but just like something that i've been like i don't i don't want to do that i'd rather pay a professional but i figured there's no better time to learn than right now so this kit should come with everything I need and I should be able to uh, throw it together. So let's get going on this. Okay, so I just pressed these two bearings on, bolted the gear on. This is a Ford gear, so these are supposed to be the better ones. There's still some stuff I'm not using in this, but we don't need to talk about all that. I'm not doing these seals, the shims I may need, but there are some shims in there that I'm gonna try first and see if we can get the uh, engagement right. I like I said, I don't know what I'm doing, but I want to learn. And you got to learn on your own junk sometimes like this. So I'm just going to go for it. Watched, watched part of one YouTube video, so I should be qualified. Is that how this works? Well, shout out to ATF because they are the reasons that I feel comfortable enough to do this. This is like the most simple thing on a power glide, but... They are the reasons that I feel comfortable enough to do it because those guys are awesome and they showed me a lot about the inner workings of a power glide here. So the converter wasn't going on. So I decided to pull apart the pump where the converter's getting stuck at and you know try to just get to the bottom of it. Why it's not why it won't go on. So there's the um there's the pump. Oh, there's all my bolts. Not that big of a deal though, just some bolts. And here is like the actual fluid pump of this gear right here. So the, con the converter is actually not going on here like it should. 
it's it's just not not going on this guy so, pump goes like this converter slides into the pump turns it like that just like that and just not not going on and then the other issue is here that bearing is pretty chewed up you can see like kind of right there it's chewed up so it's just the converter is just a little too big so i'm just gonna get some really fine sandpaper and sand this down put this pump back together and it should work this probably not the appropriate way to do it because it's gonna make the converter kind of ride a little weird if i don't do it like just perfectly but that seems to be the issue I'm running into. I'm gonna clean up these bearings a little bit with some sandpaper, make them a little nicer so that they seal up pretty good on this converter. I should replace all these, but for uh, for this trans, which is like a cheap, cheap trans, this is like, I paid a thousand bucks for this transmission and it has some good parts, but not really that many good parts and it's a stock case. So it's really just kind of a, uh, I hate to say throwaway trans, but it really is kind of just a throwaway trans. Honestly, it's just like, it's better for mock-up and for just like light use than actual racing. Because if you have a power glide, a stock case is not ideal. Probably gonna end up breaking this case. So the plan is to hopefully have this car built around this trans and then switch to something different. And then all of this stuff will just kind of work. So. That's the goal. I already had this, that's why I'm using it. But got to the bottom of the issue. Now I just have to clean it up and we can uh, can put all this back together. So everything's gasketed. Pulling apart these pumps is not that difficult. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna keep carrying on. Well, that was the ticket. It is now in deep enough to grab the pump and all the splines. Man, that was a challenge. It's Definitely in all the way now, thank goodness. So now it's ready to go in the car and then we can go from there, thank goodness. Oh my gosh, guys, I was freaking fighting with that. I had to sand down the uh, input part of the, uh, the converter and cleaned up everything and then put it all back together, put the pump back in. Everything seems to be working good. So we are in good shape. See how long this trance lasts now that I was the last one to take it apart. Kinda. I mean, I uh, hopefully the bands are all good and everything. It's tough to get that pump back in there with the bands, but they seem all good. Everything seems tight. Everything spins pretty freely. I mean, you can you can hear things making noise because nothing's lubricated. That's the um, stator in there rubbing around and there's nothing gonna happen on the other side because it's not spinning fast enough to create any hydraulic pressure to uh, you know, make everything grab, make the uh, trans stator grab the input shaft. So of course nothing's gonna happen, but I was twisting the input shaft and it was twisting the back. So that works at least. I mean, something, I don't know. Should be good. Now time to put that in the car. Well, isn't that a beautiful sight? A power glide with an LS in a Mustang. It looks like it's in a pretty good angle. Hard to say, it's not fully tightened up yet. Um, converter, it's a little tight in there, but probably in a good spot. Um, it might need to be angled down a little bit more. Hard to say, I just kind of um, used the stock cross member here and just uh, flipped it. This is just upside down and it works pretty well. Um, I think I'm gonna try to flip it back over the other way because then you get these low spots that are up high and kind of contour for exhaust. But it's a good starting point. It holds it up at least. These are just like in by two bolts, but I can uh, probably modify this, add like a plate, some kind of stand or something to make this one work. <clears throat> Hard to say, it just, I mean, it looks pretty level like that watching uh, Blades of Glory, classic movie. So, the trans is in. It just needs a little bit of a uh, little bit of finagling. Yeah, it's, it's very close to the top here. 
and of course it being a solid rear axle car this angle is pretty important it's not like an irs car where it kind of just keeps the same angle you know if this car separates it's gonna really point the drive shaft down and you don't really want that but i also need to dent this spot right here for the shifter i mean it it would work but it's a little too close like the cable way too close for comfort so i think i'm gonna try to t i don't know like the power glide seems like it needs to be tilted down more like it's it's pretty tight at the top almost all the way tight but it's so hard to say and you know the headers are a kit so they're kind of important too i don't know i just don't i don't know yet it does seem like it needs to be down a little bit more i mean the motor looks good so some of you guys were worried that the motor is too far back or too far forward i mean it's it's right where the k member allows it's actually on the farther forward one but the farther back one is not for an ls i can tell you that because the ls would not fit any farther back on this car but it wouldn't go any more forward and i don't see why you would want it to I guess if you're worried about wheelies, but correct suspension shouldn't wheelie. So 0.5 is the number. Yep, I kind of assumed that. I could feel that it was a little this way. Uh, 1.8. Point eight, one point seven. But like, how do I know that it's level forward to back? Because this is definitely not level like that. Oh, I guess you can assume that. Uh, maybe you can assume that this is level. No. Uh. I don't know. It's it's hard to know true level. We can look at the motor mounts and see where they sit. So that one sits right there, probably more on the lower side, the bolt. This one. Yeah, so this one sits on the high side. As I kind of figured, it definitely tilts that way a little bit. Um, we'll see about I need to bring this side down just a little bit. It's tilted back a little bit too much. The motor is tilted back from what that's showing, which would mean that the trans is already tilted back pretty far. If anything, we need to raise the trans up to make it like a good spot. You guys understand what I'm kind of going with here? I'm just trying to figure out exactly where all this wants to be. Moving the motor. I knew that it was like this, where it was a little bit, you know, crooked, but I didn't think it was that bad. And I knew that the trans didn't care about the crookedness of the motor. It was more about angle of the motor right now. And these mounts do play a part in that but not a huge part. This is like that confusing geometry stuff that you kind of want to get right because it's pretty important. Um, maybe I might put the headers on, mock up the headers a little bit to see how they fit. So I'm gonna do that. I'll get back with you guys in a second. So crazy story. So I got a set of headers for this car and they're good headers. They're these long tubes right here I got from Holly. They're just um, they're just a little, little tight, like a couple spots where a little like forced to go in. Good headers though. Like they're really nice quality, like super awesome. But I wanted to try a different set of headers that I had on the shelf. So if you see here, these are second gen CTSV V2 headers. And now, Crazy story, I bought these for my V1 way back in the day because they were two inch headers and I was like, the only way to get two inch headers on a V1 is to buy V2 headers. 
and they fit perfect, like perfect, perfect. And they they were great on the V1, made good power. And then I um, took that car apart, you guys know. And then I went ahead and put that whole motor and stuff into this car. And I bought a set of headers for the Camaro when it was LS. And I didn't really like the fit of them. So I went ahead and I tried these headers, the Cooks. And they fit perfect. So they fit two cars that I own already perfectly better than any other header kit I've had. And then on top of it, they fit the V2. So basically this set of headers right here, second gen CTSV headers, two inch primaries are just the best. They're just the best headers. I don't, I don't know how else to say it. Like, look at that. It even clears the steering column enough. You know, so a lot of headers, like those ones are made to go through the steering, the steering column goes through them. These guys just work. They're already dented up because I dented them when I put them in the Camaro. But honestly, like, it's crazy. They don't even hang that low. They hang, they hung really low on the Camaro. They don't hang crazy low on this car, but they're a little low. I mean, that's, that's whatever though. But man, I like they're not really much higher they could go. I just, I can't believe it. I'm, I'm excited and I'm kind of dumbfounded because who would have thought that that would work? V2 headers fit every single car ever made. Well, I'm gonna call that as a uh, stopping point for now. I'm gonna go edit this video and then come back and continue to work. That's kind of how I do it. I go back and forth. A little background on how this YouTube stuff works, I guess. But got the uh, headers fitted up, got the trans fitted up, got the trans mount holding it. I mean, kinda, it's, it's a little off, but honestly, I could just weld a plate onto there pretty easily. So that's really not too big of a deal. I'm looking for a aftermarket one talk to the boys over at holly we'll see if we can get one of those in, um in time or i'll just modify this one not really much to modify honestly but i'd rather one that's just made for this uh trans and car and then it'll make it the right height and everything uh this angle on the trans is really not too bad now it kind of angles down a little bit which is perfect because we want the car to separate in the back so we want the diff to go lower not squat and go higher but you guys know i mean it's suspension stuff uh, the exhaust fits awesome got plenty of uh room the engine tilt is really easy it's not really a big issue it's like a pry bar i can uh move the engine uh up and down kind of swing it i guess you'd say uh the diff i need to go get a dial indicator have not finished setting this gear yet but i'm pretty close right now it's i, I just want to check the uh the backlash, I think it might need to go in a little tighter. It seems like a little bit too much backlash, but honestly, I don't know. I've never set a diff before. I'm just basing this off of things I've read and seen. And then we can drop this one out and bolt that one up. I don't have all the new arms and suspension yet, but we should be able to uh, bolt it up enough to where we can get a drive shaft measurement and then I can put all the new arms in not really a huge issue on that one because getting a drive shaft measurement is important because those things can be a couple weeks out but other than that i just have a lot of parts ordered and we are just cruising along this car is going to be so cool and so awesome when it's done uh i'm just i'm pumped i'm pumped to have this car done and off the lift too because as much as i love having a car on the lift i don't like it being a permanent fixture like this I need to get some front wheels. I saw somebody saying, you're gonna need 17 inch wheels. I know, uh, 17 inch wheels are what everybody runs on the front of a drag car for the most, like, most part. Some people run 15 inch skinnies, but I think those look ugly on a car, especially one this size. So, just uh, cranking along. I still need to order these. <laughs> I keep forgetting to order the, uh, lock, the uh, locking nuts, but we are doing well. We are doing well out here. I am also talking with Holly about doing a full exhaust. They offer a bunch of different options for full exhaust. They have Flowmasters, they have hookers, they have like five different hooker options that I was looking at. So I could probably just get a Mustang exhaust and make it mate to this, um, to this setup. And then we could just go out the back, 
over the diff and do like two exhaust tips out the back like a you know like a real mustang would do i mean this is a real mustang but like a you know like a 5.0 would have you know like an old hot rod from the 90s like this so that'll be really cool i i, I kind of want to do that make it look like it's got like a 5.0 in it because some of the uh purists the older guys would be like dang that 5.0 sounds good in there you got one of them uh Got one of them Cobra superchargers on that thing or whatever Mustang guys say, I don't know. Never really been a Mustang guy. But that's about it. That's where we're stopping for now. Thank you guys so much for watching. Keep it saucy. I'll see you next time.